Hello, I'm Bruce Stevenson from Today's Dental Consulting. You probably already know that. Today what we're going to do is have a little video uh, with some hijacked footage from Invisalign. So please don't rat me out that I stole their uh, video, but they did a pretty good job, so we're just included here. We're talking about clinical digital photography. Very, very useful in case presentations as well as uh, just generally for your dental records. There's several different cameras that you can get. We don't advocate buying the big single lens reflex ones. We like the little cheap cameras uh, better. Here's three very commonly easily available cameras. The one on the far left is from Dental Learning Centers. The one in the middle is from Photomed and the one on the right uh, is from Lester Dine. They all use the little smart cards which makes it easy to load into your computer. This is the one from Lester Dine, which is about 800 bucks. It looks a little bit different than modern model, looks a little bit different. Um, but it comes with retractors and mirrors and the whole thing. You get a kit that's got everything in it that you need for 800 bucks. And this works very, very well and is very easy to use. The one we like the best is from Dental Learning Centers. That's the one on the far left. Uh, I think it gives you a little bit better color um, than the other than the Lester Dine camera, but that may be my imagination, and it does cost considerably more. This one's about sixteen or eighteen hundred bucks, as opposed to eight hundred bucks. But again, it comes in a little kit. Um, don't get too hung up. Buy the cheap one if you like. It works very very well. Here is our cheat sheet, and you can download this from our website. This shows you the views that we want and the criteria that we want to use. Okay, so you can see down below, one of the things that we want to get is the mucogingival junction in all areas of the mouth. Now you can see on the photo on the upper right, we didn't quite get all the mucogingival junction on those lower anterior teeth. So what we would do in that situation, is just take another picture, pulling the retractors down a little bit. Because I think that's very important to have that. Uh, here's a cl nice close-up uh, of the retracted upper anterior teeth. Uh, you can see on the Invisalign video we're going to insert here that um, they don't emphasize the mucogingival junction. They also say this is the only retracted anterior photo that you need to take, and I think that's not true. I want you to also take this one. Um, it's just easier to show patients and to have a record of the, lo the crowding and the lower anterior teeth as well as the upper if you do a retracted open. So this is in addition to the ones that Invisalign wants you to use. And it's nice to show the patient, you know, and you say, oh, what do you think about those ugly crowns? Now you put that, that image up on the screen and the, for the patient or show it to them on an iPad and the first thing they always say is, are those my teeth? Yep, they really are. So let's watch the Invisalign Technique video and then I'll be back. High quality photos that accurately capture your patient's dentition and occlusion are an essential component of the treatment process. Submitting quality photos enables Align technology to properly evaluate the impressions as well as to accurately set the initial bite for your Invisalign ClinCheck treatment plan. The tools and materials you will need are a digital camera with a minimum of 5 megapixels as well as optical zoom and preferably macro focus capabilities. Cheek retractors for use with the anterior and buccal photos. Articulating paper, a dental examination mirror, and an occlusal photo mirror for the occlusal photos. Please note, if you are using a point-and-shoot digital camera, we recommend that you disable the digital zoom. Please refer to your camera's user manual for further instructions. Begin with the extraoral images. Include frontal repose, frontal smiling, and right profile photos, reminding the patient to keep their bite closed during this process. Position the patient approximately three feet in front of non-distracting, neutral colored background. When taking the frontal photos, position the patient so they are facing the camera. Fill the entire frame with the patient's head and neck as shown here. 
Then have them smile and take the frontal smile photo. Turn the patient to their left to capture the right profile photo. If the patient has longer hair, have them pull their hair back to expose the entire jawline. Let's move on to the required intraoral photos. There are five required intraoral images, frontal anterior, right buckle, left buckle, upper occlusal, and lower occlusal. For all intraoral photos, make sure the patient is seated in the dental chair with their head resting on the headrest. Begin with the frontal anterior image. Place a cheek retractor in each side of the patient's mouth and have the patient hold them while biting down. Position the camera with the midline centered in the image and so that the buccal surfaces of the molars are visible on both sides. The right buccal photo is next. With both cheek retractors in the mouth, have the patient bite down then pull back on the right retractor while relaxing the retractor on the opposite side. Assist the patient with retraction if needed. This will allow more of the molar region to show on the patient's right side. Position the camera perpendicular to the buccal segment. If there are issues exposing the second molars in the buccal photos, the use of narrow, more V-shaped retractors may be needed. Repeat the same process for the left buccal photo. In preparation for the occlusal photos, submerge the occlusal mirror in warm water to help prevent fogging. Before taking the occlusal photos, Marking the occlusal with articulating paper is recommended. The visible contact points from the articulating paper will help your technician accurately set the initial bite on your treatment plan. Begin by drying the teeth thoroughly. Then, have the patient bite down on the articulating paper, making sure the paper is far enough back to mark the contact points on the molars. Repeat on the opposite side of the mouth. Inspect the occlusal surfaces to ensure that the marks are clearly visible before moving on to take the occlusal photos. Pull the upper lip away with retractors. Next, position the warm occlusal mirror at the rear of the upper terminal molar while the front rests on the lower incisors. Have the patient hold the retractors as shown. Position the camera at a 60-degree angle from the mirror's surface before taking the photo. Repeat the same process on the lower arch. Insert the lower retractors. Position the occlusal mirror at the rear of the lower terminal molar while resting the front of the mirror on the upper incisors. Again, have the patient hold the retractors as shown. Position the camera at a 60-degree angle from the mirror's surface, compose the photo, and take the shot. As you can see in this repose photo, the patient is in the ideal relaxed closed position, three feet from the wall. A subpar image like this one has a hard shadow behind the patient. This is a good frontal photo. In this photo, the patient is tipping their head, which is unacceptable. Again, make sure the patient is looking straight ahead. This is a good anterior photo. This image does not pass inspection. It is very important to check the quality of each image before moving to the next position. When evaluating buccal photos, make sure the relationship of the first and second molars are visible as shown here. Reject any images which do not show this relationship clearly. For buccal photos, the camera should be perpendicular to the buccal segment. You should see both the upper and lower first molars, but little to none of the opposite upper central incisor. Images like this should be discarded and the photo retaken. Make sure the arch is completely visible and the mirror is fog-free before taking occlusal photos. Make sure all the images are clear and in focus before ending the photo session. I think that was a fairly complete 
little sequence on how to take those photographs. A little bit of practice. It's really not that difficult and it doesn't take that long. Less than five minutes in most cases. A couple little comments. One, I would not use the carbon paper. Okay, we don't actually even do that with Invisalign, but leave that off because it just kind of messes up your photographs um, and generates patients' questions. Um, number two, if you don't have uh, you didn't get the image the first time and you want to take a second one or a third one or a fourth one, that's okay. You're not doing a set with a certain number of images in it. If it takes you 20 images, save all 20 of them. It doesn't make any difference. More images are better than less images anyway. And the last thing is, if you warm the mirror, they mentioned that, but that really is kind of a critical step. You need to warm the mirror either in some warm water or some way. Um, if you do it in warm water, be sure that you dry the mirror well, because you don't want a lot of speckles on there either. So that makes it a whole lot easier for you. Uh, if you happen to use Open Dental, you can save these images very easily in the Open Dental image module. So hopefully that's been a little bit helpful for you. And go take some pictures.